Hi everyone, I'm Julie Chavez Rodriguez, the campaign manager for Biden-Harris 2024. Thank you so much for being here today. We are fired up to reelect President Biden and Vice President Harris. Today is the 14th anniversary of the Affordable Care Act, a truly transformational piece of legislation that has provided affordable health care to millions of Americans and protected coverage for tens of millions more. The Affordable Care Act represents everything that I know Joe Biden believes in. Its passage proved that by working together, we can accomplish big things in Washington that make a real difference in people's everyday lives. That's why I'm so excited the President Biden, President Obama, and Speaker Pelosi were all able to sit down with each other yesterday to mark this historic anniversary. And I've, I'm even more excited that they were joined by Ashley and Dr. Bryant Stevens, two amazing leaders in their own communities. It's people like Ashley and Dr. Bryant Stevens who President Biden is fighting for. And I'm so glad they had the opportunity to talk about the real world impact of the Affordable Care Act and the importance of having a leader in the White House who is fighting for our families. Because they're right, leadership matters. You know that and I know that. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have accomplished so much during their first term that has made a real difference in people's lives. And they're running for re-election because we have more to do together. We know that together with the American people, we can continue fighting and making a real difference. But while President Biden is fighting to keep moving our country forward and making life better for working people, his opponent, Donald Trump, wants to drag us backwards and in fact has his sights set on gutting the Affordable Care Act. The stakes of November have never been higher, and nobody knows it more than President Biden, President Obama, and Speaker Pelosi. So with that, I'm excited to kick off today's event and let the three of them, along with their special guest, tell you all about the history that was made 14 years ago today. Joe Biden and I did a lot together, but nothing made me prouder than providing better health care and more protections to millions of people across this country. This is a historic day. Mr. President, you've done what generations have attempted to do. You have turned the right of every American to have access to decent health care into reality for the first time in American history. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> the Affordable Care Act is stronger now than it has ever been. We've got millions more people insured under the Affordable Care Act. My predecessor, many in this chamber, want to take prescription drugs away by repealing the Affordable Care Act. I'm not going to let that happen. In fact, I'm not only protecting it, I'm expanding it. We made history when the Affordable Care Act became law. We also took a giant step toward realizing the fundamental principle that health care is a right and not a privilege. We made a lot of progress, but there's more to do. So let's finish the job. Thank you, Julie, for leading our campaign. And thanks to everyone for joining this special call to celebrate the 14th anniversary of the Affordable Care Act. As you all know, I thought it was a big deal at the time. <laughs> well, it's even a bigger deal today. Most consequential health care law since Medicare and Medicaid in 1965. While the Affordable Care Act has been called a lot of things, especially by Republican friends, Obamacare is the most fitting description because Barack did it. Barack did it. It wouldn't have happened without him. No matter how many times he was told to give up, he never gave up. It was always about the millions of Americans lying in bed, staring at the ceiling night, wondering what will happen if my spouse gets cancer, my child gets very sick. Will I have enough insurance? Can I afford the medical bills? Will I have to sell a house? Barack never gave up. That's character, that's leadership. Without the courage of Barack Obama, we'd never have gotten the Affordable Care Act done, period. I called it a historic day. No one knows that better than the greatest speaker in the history of the United States House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi. The Affordable Care Act would not be law without her. And that's a fact. We would not still have the law without so many Democrats defending it against Republican attempts to get rid of it. That includes my partner, making the ACA even stronger, Kamala Harris, who defended it as the Affordable Care Act as Attorney General of California, as a U.S. Senator, and now as a great Vice President. On our watch, 
We are proud of the 21 million more Americans have insurance today through the ACA than they did when we started. But we know the ACA would not be law without so many of you. And this is a call to thank you for improving the savings and saving lives of millions of Americans. But we also can take any, we can't take anything for granted. Republicans have voted, it's hard to believe, 50 times to repeal the Affordable Care Act. 50 times. And now Donald Trump and his MAGA extremists are determined to try again. Trump says he's running to terminate the ACA. That would help health care coverage, take health care coverage away from tens of millions of Americans. And 100 million Americans would lose protections for pre-existing pre conditions. Folks, it simply can't let that happen. We won't let that happen. We're determined. We're determined as ever to defend and strengthen the Affordable Care Act and to make health care a right, not a privilege in America. I know we can do it. And it matters when you have the help of your friends. And with that, I'm honored to welcome to the call Nancy Pelosi and Barack Obama. Nancy, over to you. Thank you very much, President Biden, for bringing us together to celebrate 14 years of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. This monumental achievement could not have been possible without the visionary leadership of President Obama, as you said. The commitment to our great champion of the people, Harry Reid, and the Democrats in the Senate. And I'm very proud of the extraordinary courage of our House Democrats. President Biden, you not only helped pass and save the ACA then, but now and helped strengthen and expand it now in your presidency. For 14 years, the ACA has been a lifesaver for millions of families, ensuring that more than 100 million Americans with pre-existing conditions can receive care, as you mentioned. And that being a woman is no longer a pre-existing medical condition. The law has expanded access to affordable health care and free preventive care, helped millions of young people stay on their parents' plans, ban lifetime limits on care, and so much more. None of this historic progress would have been possible without you, our grassroots activists, participating in outside mobilization. I join the president in saying thank you. That's why today's call is so important, because the fate of the ACA is on the ballot this year. This isn't the first time we've had to fight for our health care. During his first term, Trump was just one vote away from repeal. But because we held 10,000 grassroots events across the country where people and families told their powerful stories, how ACA saved their lives, we prevailed and the ACA still stayed strong, Obamacare. Now Trump is trying again to terminate the ACA. And he won't stop there. He wants to roll back our new law under President Biden's leadership that lowers pres prescription drug prices for seniors. Meanwhile, House Republicans have unveiled a new budget proposal that removed many of the ACA's protections for existing conditions and lower ACA and the lower ACA pre uh, premiums that we delivered under the president's leadership. They want to move that and reverse our lower drug prices for seniors. We have no choice. We must win this election. Well, it's great to be here to talk with you about the Affordable Care Act and the stakes of this election. As you know, Joe is an extraordinary friend and partner. He was by my side for eight years. Nancy, and I agree with Joe, best speaker maybe in our history, was an incredible ally to both of us in the House. We wouldn't have gotten most of what we got done without her. But together, we accomplished a lot. And there's nothing I'm more proud of than the ACA. It can be easy to forget these days, but passing the ACA was hard. Sure. Health insurance companies were resistant to change. Most Republicans didn't want to work with Democrats on anything. But for the three of us, giving up wasn't an option because we had met too many people who needed help. People like Ashley Ewald and Dr. Tyra Bryant St Stevens, who are on call with us today, Americans who told us stories about being denied care or charged more because of a pre-existing condition, or who worried about losing their house if they got sick. The ACA was for them. And while it's never been perfect, it's worked a lot better than even many supporters thought it would. As Nancy just laid out, the ACA has made a real difference in the lives of millions of people. It's provided health coverage to millions of Americans, it's prevented insurance companies from denying coverage based on a pre-existing condition, lowered prescription drug costs for millions of seniors, allowed young people to stay on their parents' plan until they're 26, 
eliminated lifetime limits on benefits that often put people in a jam. So I, I couldn't be prouder of the ACA. It's why we do the work. It's why we run for office, to make a difference in the lives of people who we were elected to serve. And nobody knows that better than Joe. That's why he made it a priority to strengthen and build on the ACA. And because he has, more Americans are covered than under any other president, including when I was in office. Now we have a chance to do even more. But that only happens if we send Joe and Kamala back to the White House in November. So we got to keep working. And let's remember who we're fighting for. So with that, what I want to do is turn it over to two leaders who are working every day to make a huge difference in their communities, because it's one thing for someone like me to get up here and talk about the importance of protecting the Affordable Care Act. It's another thing to hear directly from the people who it's actually helped. So I want to introduce Ashley, who's on the screen. Hey, Ashley. Hey, hello, President Obama and President Biden and Speaker Pelosi. Thank you so much, President Obama. It's such an honor to join you, President Biden and Speaker Pelosi today to talk about an issue that is so important to my generation. The Affordable Care Act has quite literally been life-saving for young people across the country. It has protected our health care as we navigate all the scary parts of growing up. It means we can go to college, pursue careers, try new things, all without having to worry about being kicked off our parents' coverage, needing to find a job that provides health insurance, or facing sky-high premiums when we try to enroll in our own path, plan. But I also want to talk about an important part of President Biden's work, strengthening the ACA, that I don't think gets enough attention. And that is how he has expanded access to mental health care. As a young adult, who has experienced my own mental health struggles. I know firsthand how important healthcare is, mental health care specifically. That's why I'm so grateful for President Biden and Vice President Harris fighting for our healthcare and fighting to make more progress and move this country forward. President Obama and Speaker Pelosi, this law has been so critical in making sure millions of Americans have more affordable, accessible healthcare. A lot of people my generation probably don't even know this, but the ACA is the reason they can stay on their parents' plans until they turn 26. Can you tell the people on this call more about why that's the case and how the law benefits young people overall? Well, thanks, Ashley. You know, before the ACA, young adults could be kicked off their parents' health care plan, often right when they were getting ready to head out on their own. And if you had a pre-existing condition, the same companies could deny you coverage. They could charge you more. So the ACA changed all that. Now health care plans are required to let young adults stay on their parents' plan until they're 26. Insurance companies, they can't deny somebody coverage or change them simply because they have a pre-existing condition like diabetes or asthma. So all that stuff's important because while young people are generally pretty healthy, all it takes is one diagnosis or one injury, one accident to throw off your plans if you don't have insurance. And thanks to the ACA, young people everywhere have some security. They have some freedom to choose how they live their lives. And, that, and that's really what the ACA is all about. Now, like any freedom, we can't take this one for granted. Right now, the presumptive nominee for the Republican Party for president says he wants to repeal the entirety of the ACA. And that would mean kicking millions of young people off their parents' health insurance, raising costs at a time when a lot of folks are just starting out. We can't let that happen. We've got to keep building on the ACA, expanding coverage, lowering costs four more people. We've gone too far to come back. And that's what Joe and Kamala believe. That's what they've done while they've been in office. And that's why this election is so important. Young people cannot sit on the sidelines. What you don't want is after the election, young people were opting out, didn't vote, and then suddenly you find out you lost your insurance. 
or you're being charged more and you're wondering what's happening, well, now's the time to pay attention so that you're voting to make sure that these benefits are continuing to benefit you. Nancy. Thank you, Mr. President. President Obama fought for this in the ACA, in Obamacare, and now has laid out very clearly just how revolutionary the ACA has been for our young people. Letting young people stay on their families' plans has been game-changing, empowering young people to take charge over their lives, knowing that they had the stability of health coverage. Professional, it support, professionally, it supports their entrepreneurship if they want to start a business or take an internship or a job that may not provide health benefits, but will put them on a path to success in their careers. Personally, it enables them to take advantage of free preventive care and access to reproductive care, which is an important health issue. The ACA is an investment in the next generation. That's one of the reasons I'm so proud of our work to pass it. But we have to let people know what's in it for them in this election. Young people also tell us that it's such a relief that their parents uh, uh, have them covered in, in, according to ACA and not some separate plan. But we don't agonize, we organize. And all of this is at stake in November. Trump tried to rip it away affordable care from millions of Americans, including millions of young adults. And now he's doing it again. And again, we have to make sure people know. But I've always said, again, we don't agonize, we organize. In 2018, when we won the House, people would tell us, you're lucky that health care became a major issue in the campaign. I said, no, we didn't. We weren't lucky. We made our own luck. It was all of you the grassroots volunteers at the 10,000 events that were held where families showed up, told their stories and made the difference. And again, it's going to take all of us rolling up our sleeves and coming together to protect the Affordable Care Act for everyone and certainly for the children. Next, we are lucky to have Dr. Tyra Byron Stevens, a pediatrician from Philadelphia, join this special call. Dr. Bryant Stevens, your eye on the line. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Dr. Tyra Bryan Stevens, as Speaker Pelosi mentioned, and I'm a pediatrician in Philadelphia for many years. It's an honor to be here today with President Biden, President Obama, Speaker Pelosi, and Ashley. Um, I've spent my career researching asthma and environmental asthma triggers and implementing interventions in underserved, poorly resourced communities. And let me tell you, I've seen firsthand just how transformational the Affordable Care Act has been. When I first started in pediatrics, health insurance companies were able to deny coverage for children with asthma, which would often put life-saving preventive treatments simply out of reach for far too many families. But thanks to the work of all the leaders here today, no insurance plan can reject individuals, charge more, or refuse to pay for essential health benefits for individuals with pre-existing conditions. And this means that hundreds of millions of Americans can access affordable health care they deserve, which makes people's day-to-day -day lives so much easier and closes health disparities. I do worry when I hear Donald Trump promising to terminate this life-saving law. I worry about what it means for the families that I see and serve in my clinic and the children who have asthma simply because of the environment they grow up in. I worry about what it means for their futures. So my question for President Biden is, can you talk a little bit about what is at stake in this election, especially when it comes to health care? Doc, well, first I want to thank you. You always are there for your patients. You see firsthand what's at stake. This election is about two different visions of America, as basic as that. My vision, our vision about the future, where folks have the freedom and security of affordable health care, low prescription drug costs, and just a little more breathing room, as my dad would say. And because you organized, you mobilized, and you voted in 2020, we saved millions of Americans who are on ACA $800 a year in premiums. We have the lowest uninsured rate ever in America today. For the first time, we gave Medicare the power to negotiate lower drug prices when we were seniors. When you and I were in the Senate, we started trying to get that done. Well, finally, and we what it enabled us to do was cap insulin at $35 a month. It only cost them 10 bucks to make it, by the way, instead of $400 a month. We're putting $2,000 a year cap 
on total out-of-pocket expenses for seniors for all prescriptions, including expensive cancer drugs that cost ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars. But not only saves seniors money, it saves taxpayers significant amount of money. These actions we've taken so far have reduced the federal deficit by $160 billion because Medicare is no longer paying the exorbitant prices for prescription drugs. And I want to keep moving. So all Americans, not just seniors, pay $35 a month, have a $2,000 cap for prescription drugs. I want to make those $800 ACA per savings permanent. Meanwhile, Donald Trump is about the past and serving himself. This is the guy who doesn't care about science and reason. Remember, during the pandemic, Donald Trump told us to inject them, ourselves with bleach. He said, there's nothing to worry about if you do that. Now Trump keeps telling us he's going to terminate the ACA. Think about what that means. It would mean 100 million Americans with pre-existing conditions would lose their health care coverage. It would mean young people would be kicked off their parents' coverage. Tens of millions of Americans will lose health care coverage as a consequence of all that. He wants to get rid of the power of Medicare to negotiate lower prescription drug prices, driving up cost of insulin back to $400 instead of $35 for seniors. And Trump recently said Social Security and Medicare, quote, there's a lot you can do in terms of cutting, end of quote. Right on cue, 180 House Republicans just proposed a budget that would raise Social Security age, retirement age, and slash Medicare. I have a better idea. I'll protect Social Security and Medicare. Trump also brags about getting rid of Roe v. Wade, getting it overturned. He even went on TV to make that point. Let's be clear. Trump's responsible for the chaos that followed. But we can turn that around. Send me a Democratic Congress, and Kamala and I will make sure Roe v. Wade becomes the law of the land again. I can go on, but the bottom line, health care is a stake in this election. And I'm confident when we make the case, we will win. Thank you, doctor, for your question, and thank you all for your good work. Thanks again for joining us today. This is really important for the American people. You're the heart of this campaign. There's so much at stake in this election. Literally, our freedoms, our economy, our health care, our very democracy. Trump is taking us backwards. We are going to move you forward. And with your help, we're going to win. Every time we've tried to rip away health care, you've stopped them. We've stopped them again. We're going to stop them again and again as often as they try. You're the reason I've never been more optimistic about our future. We just remember who we are. We're the United States of America. There's nothing, nothing but under capacity of the United States when we do it together. So God bless you all and may God protect our troops. I'm going to turn it back to Julie now. I want to thank you all for joining us today to mark the 14th anniversary of the Affordable Care Act. I hope you enjoyed this special opportunity to hear from President Biden, President Obama, and Speaker Pelosi, the architects of this transformational law that is making such a difference in communities across this country. And as the president said, this work is not done yet. There's still so much we can accomplish together to cover more Americans, to bring down health care costs, and so much more. But here's the truth. In order to do any of these things, we first have to send President Biden and Vice President Harris back to the White House. We cannot afford to let Donald Trump and his attacks on quality, affordable health care back in the White House. There's no question. This is going to be a close election, and it's going to, going to take all of us, including each and every one of you, to roll up our sleeves, work together, and defeat Donald Trump again. And we want to keep our country moving forward. The stakes of this election could not be higher, and we need all of you in this fight, talking to your friends and families, organizing your communities, helping us raise the resources we need to win again in November. So tell us how you're going to get involved. Go to joebiden.com ACA and get involved today with our campaign. We're so grateful for all that you guys have already done, and together, let's go and win this election. Take care.